Hallelujah. 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 I see a vision of someone come with a shopping list for the Lord and I saw the hand of the Lord reach down into your pocket (laughs) and just take it up hallelujah it's being taken care of every one of those (laughs) oh there are a number of shopping lists here today hallelujah number call them prayer requests, but I tell you, (laughs) they're a spiritual shopping list. Sister Hallie came and told me, she said, Sister Ruth, said you folks prayed, I had a a mammogram, and she said, I just got the report, it is clear as a bell. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, there is a miracle flow here today. (laughs) A miracle flow. A miracle flow. Hallelujah. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. What God's doing in me. Is for What God's making of me is for eternity. It's not just for today or even tomorrow, for this shall pass away. opportunity yet to greet most of you, but we'll try to catch up in the next two days. I tell you, there's a glory. (laughs) There's a glory that's here. I saw, just a little earlier ago, I saw the river 
and it was above our heads. I saw there was a flow of the river above our heads. <laughs> oh, yes. I, uh, what I'm seeing God do in these days is that he is lifting whole congregations into new realms. What we used to have individually, we, we don't have time even to pray for people individually as much as we used to, but God is taking the whole congregation and he's lifting them all into a new realm together so that we can collectively sit in heavenly places with him. <laughs> oh, yes, I saw that river above us. Oh, it was flowing. We were in the river, and the river was above our head. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. You say, well, how could it be? I, I'm still breathing. Well, that's the nature of this, uh, this river. In that natural river, you can't be in the depth of it and continue to breathe. But I tell you, <laughs> in this heavenly one, he's taking us into realms. Uh, already, many of you have had visions uh, in the service today. You've been taken into realms that you've never been uh, Others just need to release yourselves. <laughs> we call it releasing the joy, but you release yourself unto the joy. You release yourself unto whatever it is God is doing. Hallelujah, it's here. Amen. Hallelujah, it's here. Now the word that God spoke a few moments ago that I just want to speak on a few minutes is that word... He said prophetically, he said, I'm going to change the course of your life. <laughs> Those weren't very excited amens. I could almost hear some of you saying, oh me, just about the time I've got my life ordered like I want it to be, God's going to upset the order. Oh, yes, <laughs> just about the time we get everything arranged just like we want it. Someone said just about the time, uh, you know, that you can sort of sit down and enjoy what God has put you into. He's got you into something different. I, I'm just the reminder here of what the Holy Ghost said in case you didn't hear it. I want to remind you and I want you to take a hold of it in the realm of the spirit so when, when you come into those changing patterns, you won't be taken unaware, but you will let go and flow with the flow. The problems come when we try to hold on when we hold on to the old, when we hold on to tradition, when we hold on to our own ideas, when we hold on, hold on, hold on, when we're holding on, sometimes it all, we almost lose an arm. <laughs> Not always literally, but sometimes, you know, we're holding on for dear life when he's saying, let go. <laughs> Let go, let the river flow, let it carry you, amen. Not only that you shall carry the river, but the river shall carry you. How many have read my first book, Glory? Quite a number. If you haven't read it, I encourage you to get it. How many have read my new book? Just came out in February. Great blessing. Get numerous copies and take them. Revival, Glory. Yesterday, Brother Sid Roth called me. Uh, uh, how many know Brother Sid Roth with Messianic Vision, one of the great Jewish Messianic leaders in America, and he called me and interviewed me over live over the telephone, and I tell you, he said, Sister Ruth, your new book is going to do even better than your old one. He said, I read it, and I got such a... <laughs> such a revival glory in my spirit, and we began talking about it. By the time I came off of that uh, telephone conversation and that interview, 
Oh, we'd been singing, teaching them how to sing spontaneously over the radio, and we were, <laughs> we were doing all those things over the air. And I walked up to the campground, actually, to greet Sister Alcorn, who had arrived, and uh, I was called over to the office, and they, as I was sitting there waiting, Sister Mason got word of just at that moment that her husband had gone home to be with the Lord. But there was such a glory. We'd just been in that glory. <laughs> her life in a moment had a totally new change of course. He was well, healthy, 52, 53 years old, a lovely brother, played the guitar here, involved in so many aspects of the ministry. We didn't know that the Lord would just take him home. It seems to me God's taking people home because time is short. We've had a number of people just in the last couple of weeks that have gone home to be with the Lord. And it seems that uh, there's such a sense of the coming of the Lord that the Lord is trying to change all of our priorities. Uh, he's trying to give us all a new focus in our lives. Uh, and he's letting us know that this is the hour of our destiny. This is the very hour that we've been brought into the world for. This is the time uh, that uh, he has spoken unto us of, not a future time, but that time is right now. Hallelujah. And he's going to help you to order the course of your life, but he's also, he's going to do certain things in your life that will cause your giftings to flourish. Oh, yes. I don't believe that most of you need anything further than what you already have. You just need the release of it. And this is such a wonderful place to come for release. While you're dancing, while you're praising, while you're rejoicing, those releases begin to come in such a way you get so free here that when you get back home and maybe your place at home isn't quite as free as here, you'll still have that flow flowing out of you. Just like when I came from my house where I'd been on the radio, I was singing. I don't know, I was singing in the spirit and that flow of the glory was still there. And as I was sitting, just waiting, Sister Mason was waiting for, for the doctor to come on the phone. And, and uh, as, as we're waiting, I, I, I wanted to get serious. You know, I wanted to get somber and sober. But I was in the flow. I was in the glory. I just kept singing in the glory as I sat there. And when that glory just came and covered her, amen, it became a protection to her. God is bringing that glory into your life in such a way it's going to be a protection against every bit of news that comes your way. It's going to be a protection for every trial. It's going to be that which protects you from the things of life. The glory is going to be a covering unto you even as it's said in Isaiah chapter 4 upon every dwelling place and place of assembly on Mount Zion the glory shall be a covering or a defense but the word that I want to read to you now is from Isaiah concerning the courses I'm going to change the course of your life that's what the Lord has said Isaiah chapter 44, yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel whom I have chosen, thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeserun, whom I have chosen, I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my 
thy spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the water courses. <laughs> you don't mind the course of your life being changed when it's being changed by the river. Oh, yes, if it were being changed by the difficulties of life, that would be one thing. But when it's the river that begins to cut a wider bed, when it's the river that begins to move in such a way that there are new turnings because of the river itself, amen, there is that springing up of willows by the water courses, hallelujah. Now sometimes we think when God calls us uh, that whatever he calls us to do, we're going to do it till Jesus comes. When I went to Hong Kong at the age of 18, I thought that I would be in Hong Kong the rest of my life. I waved goodbye to mother and dad and my brother at the New York Harbor, thinking that was what I would be doing. I would be serving the Lord in Hong Kong until Jesus came. Well, I was there almost four years. And after several years, what happened? This was the time of what we call the charismatic renewal and the Lord sent by a, 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 an Episcopal minister who was being used very greatly. His name was Ed Stoob, and he, uh, I helped to arrange the meetings. He was one of these Episcopalians that uh, was uh, co-editing the, the magazine that was writing out about the Episcopalians getting the Holy Spirit and uh, he was responsible for just thousands of denominational preachers being filled with the Holy Ghost. And this particular night after the service, I was sitting with him and several others we had just met. He didn't know me. And as we were seated there together, I said to him, I have a problem I want to discuss with you. And he said, wait a minute. I feel the spirit of prophecy coming over me. Well, I was accustomed to prophecy. I was raised in a church that knew prophecy. I, I, I was familiar with the prophetic flow, but we Pentecostals never prophesied in roof garden restaurants. It takes the Episcopalians and some of the others to do that. But I honored what he said and I bowed my head and he began to prophesy. And the Lord said, I have called you to a ministry around the world. It is not that you doubted my word, but you doubted that I could do it to you. Does that sound familiar? If I were to ask any of you, do you doubt the Bible? You'd all say, oh no, we believe it from cover to cover. If I were to say, well, what about you? Well, suddenly we have all of the reasons that some of these things couldn't happen to us. We know our own limitations. We know the, the very reasons why God could not do these things in and through us. The Lord said, I have called you to a ministry around the world. And I'd forgotten that because in those days, People went to one country and stayed in that country the rest of their life. There was not the traveling ministries abroad as there are today. But when the Lord said that, I was reminded when I was 11 years old that a minister had laid his hand on my head and prophesied that I would be used all over the world. <laughs> And this, I, I, I didn't remember that uh, because it was so great. It was beyond where I came from. 
It was beyond the little church that had sent me out from Richmond, Virginia. It was quite a miracle for me to make it as far as Hong Kong and to have the privilege of serving the Lord in Hong Kong and not even, just to even consider anything different would have been way beyond me. But in that moment, the Lord said, if you will make the consecration, I will prove to you that I am able to do it. <laughs> With every enlargement, there comes a further consecration. I said, yes, Lord, that day to the Lord, not knowing how God would do it. Here I was in Asia, a woman. This was before the day when women have been given such liberty. I was young. The time God spoke to me, this particular time, I'm a, I was still in my maybe 20, 21, not yet 22. And uh, young people were just not given these opportunities in Asia. In those days, you had to have gray hair to be honored in Asia. But the Lord said, if you will make the consecration, I will prove to you that I'm able to do it. Hallelujah. And my life has been a story of God proving to me that he can do exactly what he wants to do with your life. Amen. I never asked him to prove it, but he was the one that volunteered to do it. Amen. Hallelujah. And it was just a couple of months later that I found myself in India preaching to 10,000 people and it was the beginning of God opening amazing doors among the nations of the world, uh, going from country to country and preaching. Didn't have a big church behind me, didn't have an organization behind me, but I had the call of God. Amen. It's the calling. <laughs> It's the calling that makes the room. The calling brings forth the giftings and the giftings will make the room for you and bring you before great men. I began to travel in that way. I said I did what, uh, what we call our odd jobs for the Lord. God would speak and give me the name of a place or a name of a person and I would travel thousands of miles to that place and find that person, find that place uh, by the revelation of Holy Spirit, discover that somebody was there praying for someone to come and again and again, thousands of times I was the answer to someone's prayers uh, as I went by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. But when I came back to Virginia several years later, the Lord began to challenge me about dancing. And I believe, now remember, I'm one that believes the Bible from cover to cover. I believed in dancing, but I was very happy for mother and a couple of the older ladies to do it. And the Lord began to challenge me. He showed me how that when David came up to Jerusalem dancing, he brought the ark of the Lord up for a whole nation of people. Hallelujah. And he said to me, uh, showed me how that David, after he got back to Jerusalem with the ark, he called the whole nation of Israel together. He gave to every man, to every woman, to every boy and girl a loaf of bread, a piece of meat and a flacon of wine. And the Lord said, if you want to feed a nation a triple portion, you've got to be willing to dance. The Lord said, showed me that David was the only one in scripture that ever fed a nation. And he said, if you want to feed a nation, you've got to be willing to dance. Well, that was harder than leaving home and leaving mother and dad and brother at the airport. 
you know, this old flesh of ours is pretty strong. But he kept dangling that plum in front of me, and he said, if you want to feed a nation, if you want to feed a triple portion, not just the bread, not just the, the, the meat, but also the wine, the outpouring of the Spirit, you've got to dance. I like it when God tells us what we've got to do. I don't know, we ladies, we still don't even, you know, if somebody tells us what to do, we still resist a little bit. He's taking a lot of that away from us, isn't he? Soon as somebody says, you've got to, we say, mm. <laughs> But when the Lord says, you, if you want, if you want to feed, a nation, and if you want to feed a triple portion, you've got to dance. Oh, you say yes, Lord. <laughs> I'd already been, I'd already been in India preaching. I'd already been in Japan preaching. I'd already been in Taiwan preaching. Maybe a few other countries. I guess a number of other countries by that time. But there was a difference in what he was saying, something. Even though I didn't perceive all that he was saying, he said, if you want to feed a nation triple portion, you've got to dance. I said, yes, Lord, and I made up my mind. I was going to dance every day the rest of my life. That very... <laughs> Nobody knew what God had said to me. That's the wonderful thing about these meetings. You may think that everybody's looking at you. No, God's working them over so much. They can't be bothered with what he's saying to you. They're on the, they're on the uh, altar themselves. And so every day. Whereas before I used to be at the piano, I used to be at the organ, you know, I was unavailable. God was speaking to us today about making us available, amen. That availability was going to pour into our lives. And I purposed I was going to dance that first day or two. I don't think I did much more than wiggle my feet inside of my shoes, but I got a little freer every day until I could shift my weight from one side to the other. Uh, then I could begin to lift my foot a little bit. Uh, and uh, I got to the place that I could dance at the drop of a hat. Uh, and now I drop the hat. <laughs> Hallelujah. At the end of the month, I'm telling you this story because this is what consecration? That, this was a new consecration God wanted me to make. I wasn't willing before to dance. But he had shown me in Hong Kong that with every enlargement, with every change of the water course, there comes a greater consecration. There comes a, a greater giving of oneself. And I... <laughs> I began to dance, and at the end of the month, my mother, not knowing what was happening, she came over to me, and she began to prophesy, and the Lord said, I'm going to change your ministry. I'm going to send you to kings and queens and potentates and people of position, and you'll speak to them of me. And she saw the word Kathmandu spelled in front of her, didn't know how to pronounce it, and so she spelled it out. Uh, and a few months later, I was in Kathmandu, Nepal, uh, witnessing to the royal family about Jesus. Later, President Johnson in Washington, D.C., introduced me to the king. I had met everybody else in the family except the king and queen. And uh, uh, in Washington, D.C., President Johnson uh, Introduce me to the king and queen of Nepal and I was able to speak with them at that time. It was the beginning of a new water course, a new course in the direction of what God was doing in my life. And since that time, there have been many new turnings in God. 
Oh, yes, don't let your former successes limit you for the greater thing that God wants to do in your life. We should have gotten excited when he said, I'm going to change the course of your life. Sometimes we just get a little nervous because, I don't know, we somehow don't think God has very good taste. Somehow we don't think he has very good plans. He has planned for me things that a little girl from Richmond, Virginia could never have dreamed of. Amen. He has opened doors for me. Amen. That I could never have even considered and wouldn't have had faith enough to even have asked for them probably. God has done it. And somehow I have the feeling we're just getting ready for the greater day. How many sense that uh, everything in your life is getting ready for the greater thing? <laughs> that everything that you've done up until this moment has been training. It's been God teaching you on the job. It's been God preparing your heart so that you'd know how to do the greater thing. <laughs> I had just <clears throat> come back from flying to Israel and we used to go to Israel every year. And I got, at, when I was there, and I won't go into that story, I'm in the process now of writing my story, I asked for the nations. And <clears throat> I was invited at that time by the aid of Golda Meir to come and live in the country. And I said I was too busy to live in Jerusalem. Probably the most foolish statement of my life. And when I got back in my bedroom, I, I had left Virginia on Monday night, came back to my bed on Saturday night, been in Israel in those intermediate days. And in the middle of the night, the living creatures flew into my bedroom. And in a moment's time, I knew I would spend the rest of my life with the Jewish people, that I would use any kind of influence that God had given me in order to bless them. It happened in a night vision. It happened in a visitation in the night with such ease. Well, 25 years, God gave us the privilege of being in Jerusalem. And then suddenly the river began to change course again. Oh, yes, <laughs> there's a change in the course. He's brought us here to help bring revival across America. We're going to help with that revival that God is bringing here to America. But God has even other changes in your ministries, in your lives, in your anointings, in that which he has spoken into your life and into your spirit. And you're going to find yourself learning how to flow in the river and let the river carry you. Oh, as the course of your life has changed, it'll be the water course that's changing it. Oh, yes. It won't be disaster. It won't be tragedy. It won't be difficulties. It won't be other things if you will allow it to be the Spirit. Amen. If you don't allow the Spirit to bring those changes that He wants, there may be other things that will come and shape your life. But it's wonderful to let Him shape our lives in the glory. Justice <laughs> while we're praising, while we're worshiping, while we're adoring, suddenly begins to put new desires within us. Suddenly we want to do the very thing that we said would be the last thing we would ever do. <laughs> 
Oh, suddenly we want to do it more than anything else in the world. Oh, when somebody said, oh, do you think you would ever do that? In fact, my life as a girl, I can recall mother saying at times, I believe you'll be a missionary. And I stomped my feet. <laughs> Even though I was taught not to stomp my feet. I stomped my feet and said, I never want to be a missionary. But when God began to work in my life, he put the desire in my heart to be a missionary and he didn't ask me to be but I asked him if he didn't have some place in the world where he could use me <laughs> oh where was that prayer emanating from it was emanating from the very heart of God some of the desires that you're afraid to mouth in prayer are the very prayers that God's putting into your heart uh, and into your spirit uh, and if you'll pray them you'll find yourself uh, praying into the very will of God uh, praying into the very purposes of God praying into the very plan of God uh, greater things than you've ever considered uh, oh yes greater realms than you've ever known uh, yes uh, God changing the course of your life now I hear people say he doesn't want you to give that up you've spent your whole life doing that he'll take lessons you've learned in those whatever it is but I remember when the camp was smaller mother was in charge of the cooking and I, I remember, in fact, she was in the kitchen and she and several of the ladies were doing the cooking for, for the summer camp. And I recall the time I prophesied over her. And the Lord said, I'm going to take you out of the kitchen. I'm going to take your hands off of the pots. Well, that had been her job. It was almost like she thought she was being robbed of a great ministry that God had given to her. How little did we know that God was going to take my dad home that year and mother would step in as the pastor of the church. God had given her a full warning. He said, I'm going to take your hands out of the kitchen. Amen. You're not going to be doing the cooking. I'm going to raise up others to do it. And many times when the shifts begin to come in the church and somebody else is appointed to your job, rather than realizing God's freeing you, to do something greater, <laughs> we get hurt and begin to fight for the old position and the old thing that God has been using us for. Certainly we think if God called us to that, we're going to do that till Jesus comes. Oh no, there is going to be much transition in our lives because God says, I'm going to change the course of your life. I'm going to raise some of you up to stand before great men. I'm going to cause some of you to speak with people that you never thought you would speak to before. I'm going to do these things for you and you are going to be amazed. I really don't know what the tomorrows of my life include but I'm ready <laughs> I'm ready whatever it is hallelujah hallelujah can we not trust the Holy Spirit when he says I'm going to change the course of your life are we not going to allow him to bring forth those changes those enlargements that he desires to bring one night we were in a penthouse meeting in New York City and I saw the most amazing vision of a lady ministering on a platform to multitudes of people in Africa. 
she fell out under the power of God and later I noticed she was just kicking her feet up and down. I thought she was being blessed. I mean, so much for my discernment. <clears throat> I learned later she was throwing a temper tantrum on the floor with God. She was kicking her heels up and down. She didn't want to minister to multitudes in Africa. <laughs> oh, yes, throwing a temper tantrum with God. Oh, yes, it's one thing to do it with your mother, but it's another thing to do it <laughs> with God. If there are things that God is showing us or on the horizon for us uh, and we don't feel adequate for it, just begin to believe that he'll make us adequate. If they seem beyond us, let's believe God that he'll make us equal, amen, to all of the challenges that are coming to our lives in this greater day. I was in a meeting two nights ago in Fairmont, West Virginia. The Lord said within th three months that there would be major changes. I, I began to count out the three months and it was exactly the beginning of our camp meeting here at the end of June. Major that God would bring people forward speedily. Hallelujah. This is not former days in which it took great years for transition. God is doing these things speedily. <laughs> Oh, speedily he's doing it by his spirit. I believe before the end of the year, there's not going to be a place in America that's untouched by the revival. I believe that. I see the great acceleration, an acceleration, an acceleration of the Holy Ghost. That doesn't mean every church in town's going to be on fire, but there's going to be churches in every city and every town on fire for God. Hallelujah. The nucleus of the beginning of this great move of the Holy Ghost. And some of you have already been told by God what to do, but you're dragging your feet. That's what the Lord told me. You're dragging your feet and suddenly the revival is going to be there and you're going to say, Lord, give me time to adjust my life. Uh, it'll be too late. You're not going to have time for the adjustments. You'll have to do one of those come as you are parties. Oh, <laughs> come as you are, exactly as you are. There are things you just won't have time to order in your life, to arrange, to settle. They're just things you won't have time to do anymore because your life will suddenly be so full of the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some of you that are sure that God's speaking to the person next to you. But he's speaking to you. He said to every one of us, he was going to change the course of our lives. Hallelujah. Bringing us into a glory. Bringing us into an anointing. Bringing us into a power. Bringing us into a dynamic realm of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Causing things to happen in such a way that we would all be amazed by how God does it in and through us, hallelujah, praise the Lord. There's an acceleration. Oh, what an acceleration. How many feel it within you? Do you feel that acceleration within? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Are we going to let God be God in our lives? Are we going to let him do it his way? That's why... It's good not only to confess these things speaking in tongues, sister. <laughs> As Sister Marina says, 
but sometimes uh, it's good to spend most of our prayer time in tongues so we stop telling God what to do and how to do it. So much of our prayer time is telling him exactly how to deal with Johnny and how to deal with Bill and how to deal with uh, as if God doesn't know how to deal with your husband. Amen. <laughs> As if God doesn't know how to deal with your children. As if God doesn't know how to sweep in and sweep them off of their feet. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pray. Glorious changes. You might find yourself in a place in which you are a little uncomfortable because we like the familiar. And while we're waiting for the new to come forth, uh, we might feel a little ill at ease at times uh, because there's not always those. Everybody doesn't understand revival. Amen. They don't all understand it. Uh, amen. But God is going to bring forth a group of people uh, that know his glory. Hallelujah. I, Brother Sid Roth yesterday made a statement. I've known him for years. It blessed me so much because I remember he's one of the great messianic leaders, but I remember when he was pretty stiff and proper and he sort of looked askance at all of us. <laughs> he said to me, Sister Ruth, when I go to churches now, and he said this over the air, he said, when I go to churches now, even when there's a great preacher, and a great man of God, and they don't have the glory yet, I leave unsatisfied. I thought, did I ever think that uh, uh, Sid Roth would make that statement? That's the way I feel if the glory is not present. Uh, hallelujah, if his presence is not heavily weighing upon us and with us. Hallelujah. I don't want to be there. I want to be where the glory is. I want to be the willow by the water course. Amen. Hallelujah. And if the course just keeps changing, <laughs> I'm willing to change with the course of the river and flow in that greater thing that God is doing in this day and hour. You're going to find there are things he's going to take your hands off in order to give you hands that can be lifted up in the glory. I was sitting with some people at dinner night before last I was describing something I can't remember, and I did a little motion like this. They said, oh, don't move your hands like that. They said, there's such a glory, we're about to fall out here in the restaurant. That's the ease. God's doing it easily. Oh, yes. It's not hard as it formerly was. There's a river that's flowing, a river that's flowing. It's flowing from the very throne of God, that glory that's being manifested from his very throne. And it's his glory that's going to change the course of your life. <laughs> Many of you are going to stand and preach to multitudes. Many of you that never thought you'd ever preach, you'll be preaching. Hallelujah. Many of you are going to see the glory of God manifested through you in ways that you've never considered before. This is what the Lord is saying to us tonight. Let me change the course of your life and be willing for the changes. I met Sister Viola in the airport in Rochester, New York. Stay and let everybody know who I'm talking about. She's our treasurer. I was being picked up to go and speak at, L L at Lima, New York at Elam Bible School at a big summer convention. And her husband had died just shortly before that, and she and her girls were on the way to camp meeting. And we rode in the same car. They picked us up, and we rode from Rochester into Lima.
Somehow, a little mantle fell on her. She went back after the camp meeting to Philadelphia, packed up her girls and came to Virginia and never looked back. She didn't even go home and sell her house. She sold it over the telephone. She had her sister call in the movers and the packers and she never looked back. She's written her own book about her stories of traveling all over the world for Jesus. That which could have been devastating to her, her husband's being taken away. A young lawyer, how old would he have been at the time? He was 40 at the time when God just suddenly took him home well and strong and, and, and it could have been devastating but suddenly God was changing the course of her life and the course of the river. I only use her as an example, dozens of examples here. Those... <laughs> That God is making you know he's brought you into the world for something greater than what has already happened in your life. No matter how great it has been, no matter how wonderful, there is a greater day that's dawning for every one of us. Why? Because we're in the culmination of all things. God used that word that it was the time of consummation in which uh, he is bringing everything into fulfillment in this last day and hour. And we who are alive for the last day in gathering of the harvest uh, shall see the greatest harvest uh, of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was on television several days ago up in Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania, <clears throat> And uh, I had been believing God for satellite television and I was on, I think they said 40 million people were listening uh, that as I was ministering. <clears throat> but you know, you keep waiting for God to do certain things. And as we were on the program, I was just waiting for God to do something more. And suddenly I saw a vision I saw the lips of the man who owned the TV station and was, it was his program. He was interviewing me and I saw his lips suddenly become a golden sickle. And I saw a golden voice coming out of his mouth. And I saw the golden sickle and the golden lips and the golden voice reaping the golden harvest all over the world. And I began to say this, and tears began to come into his eyes. And he said to me, Sister Ruth, before I ever went on television years ago, he said there was a word given that I would be used of God all over the world, that my face would be seen and my voice would be heard. And he says, God has blessed me in my television station. Uh, my, my satellite is beaming all across America and to the Virgin Islands. But he says it's not worldwide and there's never been a mention of that again until today. Oh, what was happening? God took me by to change the course. Amen. The course. This will change the course of his life as he gets that enlarged vision. That's what God has brought you here is for an enlargement of vision. Hallelujah, we're going to release the joy, but it's going to be released and brought to the ends of the earth as we release harvest joy to gather in the end time harvest. Hallelujah, for yea, the Lord saith this unto thee, yea, reason not within thyself overly much, for even if thou wouldst reason from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, thou couldst not reason that which I have purposed for thee, saith the Lord. 
But as thou shalt yield thyself, as thou shalt yield thyself even more fully unto me, saith the Lord, I shall carry thee, I shall carry thee away into greater and greater glory, saith the Lord. I shall carry thee through greater doors, doors of opportunity, doors of ministry. Yea, I shall be the one that shall lift thee up. I shall lift thee up, and it shall be a great lifting up, saith the Lord. I have brought thee here to believe. I have brought thee here to perceive. I have brought thee here that thou mayest consider the brand new day that I am bringing even upon thee, saith the Lord. And I say this unto thee, that as thou shalt not fear, but as thou shalt trust, thou shalt see the unfolding of my plan. Thou shalt see the unfolding of my purposes. More and more glorious shall it be more and more glorious shall it be more and more glorious shall it be for thee saith the Lord just lift up your voices hallelujah Our sister that's here that ministers in the Pentagon, I just, I won't draw attention to you, but I saw this. I just saw the military personnel in the Pentagon with tongues of fire beginning to be rest upon one head after another. I see a whole new course that's going to come forth. You've had one course that's been there, but I tell you, God is preparing the new day and I see, I see tongues of fire coming upon those in military authority and leadership all throughout the Pentagon. Yeah, 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 yeah. flow out of your mouth yeah 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 I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your I delight to do your will. 
sell your house to get ready for the new thing. You'll know who it is, two or three, that God's speaking to, to sell your home to get ready for that new thing. I delight to do your will, oh my God. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my God. I delight to do your will, oh my God, I delight to do your will, I delight to do your will, oh my God, I delight to do your will, oh my God, I delight to do your will, I delight to do your will, oh my Lord, I delight to I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. Light to do your will. I delight to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. Light to do your will, oh my Lord. I delight. I delight to do your will, oh my God. I delight to do your will. To do your will, oh my Lord. I delight to do your will. Give him a good clap offering. 